Hi, I'm George, and we'll be using the Photoshop Elements Elements Plus plugin to create this spiraling text effect and use that to make this interesting page design. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. When you subscribe, hit that bell icon two times to get notifications of my new videos. And take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements, and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. To make this Alice in Wonderland project back here, we'll be using two files. One just has some text right here, which is taken from the book, and the second one is an image also taken from the original book. So we'll use both of those, and we'll use those to create this interesting kind of a text effect. Now we'll start with a brand new file. Let's get that out of the way. I'll save that. So file new, blank file, and we'll use the default Photoshop elements size right there and then choose OK. There we go. Now in here, make sure you have rulers showing. If you don't have that, go up to view and come down and check rulers right here and also check guides as well. And let's pull in that guide from the left hand side and put it into about the number one or one inch position right up here. There it is. If you don't have inches showing up here, just right click right on the ruler and you can choose inches from that pop up menu. Let's now bring up the text. You can download this text file from my website and there's a link for this in the description along with that picture of Alice. All we need right now are the first two sentences right here. It ends at moment to think. I'm going to just go edit copy. Let's go back in here. Now grab the type tool and come onto this line here and click and drag out a rectangle kind of like that. So it comes over here about to here on the right hand side. If you look at the ruler up there, it's about five and a quarter. There we go. This creates a paragraph text block. Let's now right click and paste and it pastes the text inside of that block. Now it's not quite right as you can see. So I'm going to grab the corner over here, or actually the side, and I'll pull this out just a little bit and that text should adjust itself. If it's not quite right still, we can come in here and then just manually adjust that text. And let's keep adjusting until we have some as our final word right up here. So it should be some up here. And then just a little more. See if we can get that fitting in right there. Okay, so the top line finishes on some. The second line finishes on that. And then Alice begins the third line right over there. And then if you want to, you can squeeze this up. That doesn't matter and then click on the green check mark to set that in place. We can reposition this later if we want to, but right now I'll just let it go right against that left hand side right there. Let's now bring in the Alice picture. Before we do that, let's put in a guideline for that. I'll put a guideline right at the middle of the page, which will be at the three up here. So pull the guideline in from the left hand side, put it right at the middle of the page. We'll be putting in the Alice picture just a little bit larger than that line there. Go down to the photo bin, I have it open right down here. Again, you can download this from my website. I'll just drag this in. Now, notice that here it says index. So I can't just drag it right now. The file in the background, this is an RGB file. This is an indexed file. We need to change the file format. You'll see what happens if I try to pull this in. It'll see that it can't be done. Easy to fix. Just go up here to image, come down to mode, and change this to RGB color. And you can now just drag that in. There we go, and I'll close that down. Now put this up against that line. It should snap right into position. If it's not snapping like there's a little, little magnet right there, if it doesn't snap, go up here to View, come down to Snap 2, and make sure that Snap 2 Guides is checked. Now use the Control T keyboard shortcut. That brings up our control handles. And then we'll pull the bottom corner down until it's just a little bit larger Add about 3 and an eighth if you're looking at the ruler at the top up there, or you can see right down there with that 2.086, somewhere around there. It doesn't need to be exact. You just want a little bit of space over here, so it's about between the H and the I right in there somewhere, and that fits in that Alice picture. Okay, now we need to be putting in our next little bit of text over in here. That's our spiral text, and for that, we'll be using the Elements Plus plugin. Let me bring that up. It's over here on Effects, and it's Elements Plus. If you don't have the Elements Plus plugin, it only costs $12. It's really cheap and has some real nice tricks to it. Let me show you where I can get that. There you go. And it's at elementsplus.net. And there's a 
by full version right here. There's a different version for each version of Photoshop Elements, so make sure you get the version that matches the version of Elements that you have. Again, it's only about 12 bucks there. It's 12 US right down there. It's real cheap and well worth it. Okay, it's also needed for this particular project. And I'll bring the text back up here again. We now want the rest of the text. It begins at about and comes down to well right there. Edit and copy. So we're all set there. Get that out of the way. Let's go over here to layers and make sure that you're on a graphics layer and not on the text layer right there. I want to be on a separate layer. We should be on the picture layer right here. The reason for that is when we go over here to the Elements Plus and click on text, this will bring up a special option. I'll show you where you can get to this option the other way as well, but this is just a fast way. Click on text and it brings up this little option right here. That's the one that you want. The very top where it says text on path, that's what we're doing. And then come down here to swirl in clockwise. Choose that option. And it gives you a little thing right up there. Let's go back here to our layers. It's kind of hard to see, but there it is right there. If I do the Control T keyboard shortcut, you can see it better now. I'll pull this out. It's a little bit small, as you can see. I'm just going to click on the corner down here, drag the corner out. And now if I take my type tool and triple click on that text, now you can see that spiral. We also have our text selected. I'll right click and paste that pastes our text onto the spiral. Now it's all wrong as you can see over here, so let's just triple click, select that whole text, let's come down here, we'll change the color to black, which is right there, and we'll change the size up to 12 so that it matches the size of the text up here, and then choose OK. Okay, that now matches. Now we can take this and actually spin this around and fit it in properly by using that Control T keyboard shortcut again, there we go. Now to spin this, notice that you spin it and you can't actually see the text on there while you're spinning. So just kind of estimate about where it should be. I think right about there. Click the green check mark and it sets that in place. Let's now move it up and it looks like that's just about where it should be, right in there. Okay, so that gets our spinning text. Now I mentioned that there is the other way to bring this up. If you're on a text layer, as we are right down here now, just move down to this text layer for that. Go back to the effects. If you click on the type tool now, it's going to bring up text options for that bit of text on the layer that we had selected. A lot of interesting options in here, a lot of fun stuff that you can use in here, a lot of ways of working with your text. What we care about though is on the layer tab right here and down here text on path, there's that same stuff right down there that we just brought up on its own window. You can choose that option right down here. It does the exact same thing. It's just easier if you do it all by itself by being on a different layer and not on a type layer when you do that. Okay, we now need to make this so it stands out on that image in behind, and we'll do that with a layer style. So go up here to layer, come down to layer style, style settings, open up stroke right down here, change the color to white. Just click in the middle here and drag to the upper left hand corner, choose OK. That makes it white. Now I'm going to change this so it's definitely outside. Sometimes you have to go back and forth a couple of times like that. Let's now bring the size up, and you can see there we get this, this white outline around it. Now I used one that was just 18, it's just enough thickness in there around the letters to make it easy to read where it overlaps onto this picture. Okay, now we can make it a bit larger, it's a bit too small, I want to have this text being right about where her arm is in there. The top is about right, and let's do the Control T keyboard shortcut again. And I'm going to drag this out a little bit, and choose OK and see how we're doing. Okay, it's not quite right, I'll move it over just a little bit. I'm looking up here at the A. I'll use my little arrow keys and just kind of tap that around and that's right about where you want it, right about like that. So it's just beginning to come off of the line up here and the white part, the text is overlapping her arm down there. That gives us space now to put in our black shape right in there. And there it is. Now notice we're, we're missing a little bit of our text up here. So let's go ahead and add in that last little bit of text. You can see here we lost well and the period, which is after a very deep. So that's the part that we lost. Okay, let's get that out of the way. I'll just type that in, grab the type tool, the text tool right there, and let's type that in. Will and a period. Okay. We'll be putting right in here our new black dot to make into our hole. Now again, you can adjust the size a little bit if you want to. I think I'll go just a little bit larger on this. Again, the Control T keyboard shortcut, just a little bit larger, just kind of a little visual shift in here. There's a touch too large. I want to have well kind of at the top up here. 
Okay, back in just a little bit. Let's see how that does. Okay, that's good. That's real nice. I'm going to be putting a circle in here, but I want to know the exact center. So we have a dot right there. We'll use that as a reference point. So I'll bring in a guideline from the left and put it right onto that dot right there. Pull the guideline down from the top and again right onto that dot again right there. So that gives us two guidelines as a center reference point. Let's now switch over here to the ellipse tool. That's one right down there. Hit set black and circle and from center. Now I can write onto those crosshairs that we set up and then drag from there out just like that. Now take it where the circle is coming just inside of that right side of the picture. So right about like that. And you can see that right in there just kind of overlaps that side of the picture. We're now going to add a gradient, but before we do that, we have to simplify the layer. So where the name is, right click on the name and choose simplify layer. That converts it from being a vector shape into just a graphic image. We can now go up here to the gradient tool and I have mine set at a radial gradient right there. And then bring this up. I'll set it here at the first option. This is the foreground to background. And you'll see it right down there. Now come down here, click on the right bottom color stop right there. And when that's been clicked on, notice right here is a little diamond shaped thing right there. Roll your mouse over that until it says, you see it here in just a second. Let me just get that. It's kind of hard to find, but right there where it says color midpoint, you know, not up here not right down over here. Make sure you see it say color midpoint. When you see it say that, then click on that. It'll say 50 down here. Change that to an 80. What that does is it pushes that black all the way over to here. And then choose OK. Now holding the control key down, click on the thumbnail for that circle layer. That then selects that circle. Now come inside and right over those crosshairs, just put your cursor right over those crosshairs. Click and drag just outside of that circle. You get this nice little gradient in there. Okay, at this point we no longer need those crosshairs. We can go up to View and Uncheck Guides and also Select and Deselect. Okay, now we can apply a filter onto this. Go up to Filter, come down to the Filter Gallery. And in here, you want to be in the Sketch section right here. And come down here where it says Graphic Pin. That's the one you want. I have my stroke length set at 15, light dark balance right in the middle at 50, and stroke direction at right diagonal, and choose OK. And there we go, it gets a real nice look that's a real close match actually to the dark tunnel over here inside of the picture. Let's now put an outline around this. We'll do that with a layer style, go up to layer, come down to layer style, style settings, and choose stroke. This should be outside and set the size at 2 and choose OK. And the last little detail, notice the outline around the Alice picture here. There are a few little spots and blank open areas like that. Let's go ahead and mimic that. To do that, make a new layer here above that shape layer right there. It says layer 2. Change your foreground background color so that white is in the foreground. Grab the paintbrush and I have my set at 10 pixels and it's a hard edge brush. And then just come in here and just paint right on top of that. I'll just do a couple little spots just like that. You go over here, a couple in here, a little bit larger one right down there. Be a little bigger one up here. Just a few little spots to put in some of that breakup effect that we see over in here. It doesn't need to be perfect or exact. Just a few little places in here to kind of break up that edge. And there we go. That's our falling down a well effect here. Again, using that Elements Plus plugin to get us that spiraling text. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and also subscribe as well. And take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. And there's a link for that right down there in the description. All right, and I'll see you next time.